Uh, Murray McCormick, we're trying to do both. This one's for Ryan. You've played all around the league quite a bit, now you're coaching in Toronto. How do you describe like, coaching in Toronto compared to other places you've been? Well, I think, you know, we had our challenges, you know, going into it. Um, and there's a lot of different things we got to do as far as travel and different deals as far as moving around. But, you know, our ownership, LMLSC, has done a great job to make us comfortable as we can be there. So, um, you know, I didn't, never thought I'd be in Toronto. You never know where you're going to be. It could be, you know, one day you're a certain place, the next day you're a certain place. So, uh, I really enjoyed it. And, um, you know, I was enjoying my time in Calgary, getting out west, getting closer to home. But, you know, moving to Toronto feels like home now. And um, my family and myself, we live there year-round. Um, you know, pinball's made it, you know, very comfortable for me. Um, and, you know, we really want to turn that franchise around and, and make it a consistent winner each year. Do you, are you always going to be playing the Great Cup? You, you never know that. But you just want to be able, in the playoffs to give you a chance to compete for a Great Cup. That's, that's what our goal is there. This is just for both of you, my last one. How much of an impact of being a player having your game as a head coach you carry over from that sort of world? Well, I think, you know, you hear certain people say, hey, the, the, you know, the grass ain't too far removed from the cleats. Uh, I, don't, I don't think playing and coaching is uh, very similar. I think coaching is a lot different. The fact that you, uh, you know, have that background, you can relate to the players a little bit, understand some of the circumstances that they're dealing with. Um, but I think if you, if you see yourself kind of in that player mindset as a coach, you're, you're not doing the right things. But I do think you can relate to the players and, and uh, go back to your, your background, some of the experiences that you dealt with. Yeah, absolutely. There's um, an element of understanding what the players are going through. I mean, it uh, allows you as a leader to be more empathetic to their situations. But none of these players have any, um, there'd be no reference, reference point to my career or Ryan's probably, right? They're, they're so far removed from that. They're not really paying attention to that. Next one will be John. John Hodge, 3 Down Nation. Thanks for this, gentlemen. Uh, my question is for Ryan. Um, given your history in 2007, you're kind of uniquely qualified to comment on what happens when a veteran quarterback gets hurt in a division final. I'm curious, what was your reaction to watching Zach get hurt at the end of the West Final? Well, I, I, I seen I seen he got rolled up on, and it just knowing how competitive Zach is, how tough he is mentally and physically, I, I knew he'd be you know physically available on Sunday. He's going to play. There's no question about it. But you know, going on the you know. The I guess my history with that in 2007, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I I think I gave us a chance to win the game at the end, just didn't make the right plays, right? And then uh, we had opportunity for it. It's unfortunate we couldn't bring a great cup, you know, back to to Winnipeg. I really want to be one of the first guys to do it. Unfortunately, Mike was the guy to get that done. So uh, I know there's some people that were disappointed with with that performance, but I, you know, I just um, was excited for the moment. And uh, you want to play in big games, you know, that's what you look forward to as a competitor. And uh, I was, you know, really excited. Thought we had an opportunity. Uh, this is, uh, you know, kind of a follow-up, I suppose. But what was the Murray's question? Have you shared that story with your players at all? It was a very unique story in the way you kind of entered the league. Yeah, it's funny you bring that up. I don't really, you know, um, talk much about my playing days with our guys. Um, you know, occasionally in a you know, conversation side to side with certain players, but I don't, I don't address the team with, you know, those stories. Um, it's, it's just that was a long time ago, right? And now I'm a coach, not a player. But it's it just always gets brought up, you know, in the media still, uh, which is unique uh, in itself. But uh, yeah, I'm just worried about being the best head coach I can be for the Toronto Argonauts. Next up will be GC Hanover, followed by Donna Spencer, Paul Friesen, Ted Weinman, and I think Dan just waved at me and Jeff Hamilton. Thanks, Dan. 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 Thanks, is there any doubt about your future music after this game? Uh, no, if you look at the history, I always play out my contracts and figure it out at the end of the year. I wonder, why is it that you feel comfortable doing that when that's so atypical in the group of professionals? Just believe in the organization and believe in myself and the team around you, you know? It's, it's not hard to do. Mark, hold on to John Spencer, Canadian Press, this question is for Mike. You know, before Zach Laura became a Blue Bomber, he didn't have a ton of traction in his CFL quarterback. Can you just describe how he defined or redefined himself uh, as a CFL quarterback during his time as a Blue Bomber? Well, he's the best quarterback in the league. He's a tremendous leader, a tremendous competitor. 
Um, I, I would just agree with the traction statement. I mean, uh, I was around Toronto when he was uh, a rookie, and uh, you know, very early on, he understood his leadership capabilities, uh, his magnetism. Players were drawn to him, even though he was uh, serving in a, in a backup role. Um, he got thrust into a starting position and won a bunch of games. Uh, very early on in his career, went to Hamilton, was very successful. Uh, there might be a lull in his career, like a lot of professional athletes um, maybe face, depending on the situation they're in. Uh, and now he's in a situation where um, he's got a very good supporting cast, and um, yeah, I just, that's the Zach who the people who have been around him have always known, right? I don't think. I guess the story writes is it's a resurgence, but he's he'll never not be that leader and he'll never not be that competitor. And if he's in these certain situations, he'll always be the best <laughs> quarterback in the league, right? So he's uh, he's certainly fun to be around every single day. You know, he comes into that room and attacks the day uh, like a pro should. I wonder how well you guys are over here. How well you guys know each other? What's your history if you're any? Well, I got to play against Mike, you know, when I was in Winnipeg, he was in Toronto and, you know, the veteran group that they had over there. And, you know, I got to understand how, you know, Mike approaches things. He's a, you know, smart player, physical player, a uh, great leader. You can see it on, on the defense side. We talk at coach meetings from, from time to time. I've sent him a few texts, he sent me a few. Just we got a lot of respect for him. And, and what they've done in, in uh, Winnipeg, I think, you know, years prior, is Calgary was kind of the, the model everybody wanted to follow. And I think now it's Winnipeg. And Calgary's still a great organization as well, right? They're in the playoffs every year. But I think, you know, the chance to play in three great cups in a, in a row hasn't happened since, you know, the warm moon days. I mean, that's pretty impressive this day and age. Mike, do you remember chasing him now? Or what's your interaction? Oh, I was not chasing anybody at that point. <laughs> I'm sure the coaches want to be on the bench, but... <laughs> a long time ago. You know, I think there's, uh, because there's nine teams and there's nine head coaches, there's, uh, you know, a chance to lean on guys and communicate with them, and it's very professional, and, and when you need something, you don't hesitate to ask, and I think that's uh, not just with Ryan, but with the other head coaches in the league. Um, there's always open communication. Now, even though we're competing against each other in the offseason, especially when we get together with those committee and, and the various things that you have to deal with the CFL on, you know, it's important that we stick together and, and come up with great ideas to make sure that we uh, uh, provide entertaining football going forward. And when you watch each other's teams now, whether it's on film or, or live, is there something that tells you, oh, there's that head coach is into details? Do you see something that shows that to you? Well, I would say they are. I mean, they don't have a lot of penalties, right? All three phases play, you know, good football. Now, do they have to have the craziest schemes in the world to survive? No. They, they play together, and you can see that I know it, even though I'm not in the building, that they're process-driven, and they're all, you know, pushing each other to do the best. And I've learned a lot of that from Andrew, you know, asking him about what, what it's like over there. So, um, yeah, I mean, they've got it figured out as a, as a club. And you can see, you know, the coaches, you, you know, you kind of put the expectations out there. But that locker room, that locker room is what makes it in, in, in so, so special. You can see that. So we know what we got on Sunday. Yeah, absolutely. They are. He, he's a fire. Was a fire. Is a fiery competitor, and, and his team is too. And the details question is interesting. You don't get to this point. You don't get to the final game unless you're coaching details. Full stop. Well, the defense. Ted Wyman. Ted Wyman. son, Mike, and Ryan. I hope you both could answer this question. Mike, you first. I was hoping you both could comment on your overall feelings about your time with the other organization. Like, how you spent a lot of time with the Argos? What do the Argos mean to you? Well, it's a lot of history. It's, it's you know, Ted, it's really about the, the guys you played with because a lot of the organization has changed, right, from ownership to people involved. Um, there's still guys in there like Tim Ball and Danny Webb um, that, you know, I have a huge history with. And you care about those guys. Um, and you know, you'll never stop caring about those people because you share so many good memories with them and tough memories too sometimes. But, um, you know, organizationally, once again, the, the whole organization has changed quite a bit. And I think you 
will always have a, a, a certain amount of loyalty and fondness towards the people you were with that are still there, whether that whether that organization made a shell of the organization has changed. Yeah, very similar. You know, I uh, you know spent some three years in Winnipeg. You know, we got to the playoffs all three years. It was a, a fun three years. A lot of good friends that I met there that we still talk. And I mean, I got a text from Kevin Glenn a few days ago, excited about it. You know, he works with our third string quarterback Ben Holmes, so we we're in constant you know communication. Uh, even outside of that, we talk quite a bit. So um, yeah, and then you, you look at Brad Foddy and some of the folks that still work in in the the front office and in the ticket office and all that. I mean, a lot of good people I met in Winnipeg. Uh, outside the organization as well, a lot of friends there. So fond memories there. Um, you know, I th just thought it was unique. You know, I get done there. I always thought I'd be back at some stage. It didn't end up happening. But you, you never know down the line. I plan on doing this till I'm 70. So uh, I still have uh, a lot of memories there and a lot of good friends. Thank you. We'll go to Dan Ramos, Jeff Hamilton, Taylor, Clinton, and Justin Dunn. Yeah. Uh, Dan Ramos from the Canadian Press. This question from both of you, and I'll start with how you doing, Dan? I'm very good, thank you. Um, how much does Grey Cup experience as a player and as a coach play on the field on, on Sunday? Um, well, the team changes every year, so it's up to the, the core group of guys that have been here before to help along the young guys. Um, I think the answer is pretty easy, and it's off the field stuff. It's managing your time and making sure you get back to your process, making sure you carve out enough time to, um, you know, step back from the busyness of, of this week and get, you know, back into football and get your focus straight. So uh, with the group of guys we have, I think it'll be done fairly well. And I think that's where, that's where it really helps. Yeah, I think, you know, just from my experience, the one time I played in the game was just, you know, all this stuff that was there, right? I mean, I didn't, I ate room service the whole week. I couldn't even make the team meals. So I just make it important to the guys to understand, you know, there's going to be a lot of distractions. Don't let it distract us. Let's not lose sight of what the, the whole goal is to win a game on Sunday. And uh, that, that's what we're here for, right? So, yeah, we're here to entertain and we have obligations and all that stuff. But, uh you know, like Mike was saying, like, you know, curfew and different things, you know, we're, we're not here to go out, you know, next, next week, you know, your season's over with, you know, and you're, you're, you're lucky to be playing in the last game. This is our last game, you know, win or lose. It's our last game, which is, um, yeah, it's tough to think about that sometimes. So I just think our guys are focused on that uh, last week together. Let's stick together and find ways to get this thing done. And, uh, you know, let's do our best this week to make sure we put ourselves in a position to win a football game on Sunday. Um, I, I think uh, the words in your answer to the team, they've got to figure out from training camp through to this point, they've got to figure out how to become a team. Um, without that, it's going to be hard to, to keep winning. Yeah, very similar. I think it's the locker room. You know, I think those guys got to police themselves. They got to hold each other accountable. Um, I think it's infectious when you get around certain leaders that you know, do certain things, you know, as far as preparation and you know, how they take care of their body, how, just how they mentally approach the game, you know, their whole process with it. And the more quality people you have in that locker room with great leadership, the, that, that's when your football club comes together. So, you know, we've had our moments this year where early on we weren't, I didn't feel like we were there yet, but I think we're getting there. Um, and, that, and that's the main thing. Those, those guys have really took the next step and, you know, became true pros and really enjoying each other each day and pushing each other. But those, those locker room, um, I guess relationships, right? Uh, that that kind of leads to your success. Now you got your X's and O's, and you got to go execute. But without that, you're never going to win. Uh, Ryan, this is for you. Um, I'm wondering, you kind of you kind of uh, hinted at it or, or mentioned uh, Andrew Harris obviously on the team, and everyone in Winnipeg knows how important he was to, to the Bombers runs. I'm wondering what you know, what exactly he brought to this, uh, you know, to your organization this year, and, and what you learned from him, as you mentioned, a lot of the stuff you talked. Yeah, I mean, we brought a, a big resume, right, and a, and a legacy he's already established. And, uh, you know, not a lot of guys in our locker room are even close to that, you know, type of legacy. 
Um, but there's a reason why he, he has that you know, reputation and that legacy. And I knew it before I even got a chance to talk to him, just from what I've heard you know, from other people. Um, yeah, he's a great person, you know, um, infectious leader, never stops, uh, wants to win more than anything. Uh, it's not about him, which is great, because I think you have to be selfless to be a leader. So I, he's brought that to our locker room and, and, and the experience, right? He, he's won two great cups in a row. And he's been through it, and he understands what it takes, you know, to win a great cup. And so I think, you know, his voice, you know, some of our guys that aren't as mature as him, has gone a long ways for us. Taylor Allen, Winnipeg Free Press. Question for Mike. I was wondering, do you happen to remember your first game with the Argos and what the deal was with your jersey? Why it wasn't ready in time and they have to tape on your, your, your number, the name, I believe? Yeah, I don't remember all the details surrounding it, but uh, and probably only because you see it on video. They show it once in a while. Danny Webb standing behind me with a towel, trying to keep the camera guy off <laughs> the back of the jersey. But uh, you know, Danny is a pro, and I'm sure something happened out of his control that ended up uh, with that result. No big deal. I mean, who really cares? Is a player? Is a player? Right? We just want to be out there playing. Somebody. Give you a jersey with no name and no number, it wouldn't stop us from going out there and playing. Right. All right, we'll go to Justin Dunn, followed by Jamie and I. We don't have a few minutes for questions, so I'll, I'll put in a, not the last call, but the next uh, last call. Hey, gentlemen, thanks for doing this. Justin Dunn, Freedom Nation, and Sportsnet. Mike, don't have to be for this, but you've been through this a couple times where your contract is expiring. I'm wondering if that's how you prefer it, if you thrive in it. Or would you rather have a longer term deal with this team in the NFL five or ten years? I'm kind of curious your mentality about it. I don't spend a lot of time thinking about it, to tell you the truth. Uh, you know, if I'm asking our players to stay in the moment and stay focused on this very, this very important task at hand, um, I don't waste a lot of time during the season worrying about um, after the season, right? Yes, we can fix that or figure it out after. But, uh, I imagine some people would think it's short-sighted, but I've also always believed that, um, you know, contracts are really about what you're going to do going forward, you know, it's not about what you did in the past, so it's, uh, yeah, once again, I, judging by my answer, as you can tell, I don't even put a lot of thought into that. <laughs> you know. Thanks for giving one. Brian, I'm curious, do you put yourself in that situation? You were a guy that had one, two great cups, and you were in the expiring year of your contract. Would you rather have a longer-term deal, or what do you think it would be like? Well, I think yeah, you're you're comfortable with, if with you know you, you, with what you've done, right? And uh, I'm sure I'm, I'm not in that organization. I don't know the situation with Mike, but I'm sure Mike feels really good about where he's at in management, and they have great relationships. So they it's going to get to be a done deal at some stage. But um, you know, I think you know sometimes you got to. Do those things to get a little bit of leverage, you know. Um, I'm not saying that's what Mike's doing, but sometimes you're going to play out your contract, and then, you know, let's see. It's no different than a player, right? He wants to play out his contract. Coaches play out their contracts. Me personally, being a young coach, I want to have a few years left because uh, I'm not as established as Mike. So, um, yeah, I think you know, I I don't really don't have a true answer for it. I think each individual is different, and each si situation is different, circumstances. Um, yeah, that's all I got. Jamie Knox from uh, CJME Radio in Regina. In the back, uh, Mike Ricky Hall, of course, is a legend around these parts. Uh, in our building, too. <laughs> <laughs> so what, do you, what have you seen from Ricky as a guy who's been in this league for a long time with a lot of success but continues to be able to develop a rapport with a younger generation of players? Yeah, it's quite easy for him. He is uh, the ultimate uh, authentic coach. He does not apologize for anything uh, in terms of the way he is. He's uh, first and foremost a, a great man, a great human being. Uh, I enjoy every single day interacting with him, just popping out of his office and sitting down and just shooting the breeze about life in general, not just football. And uh, his, his players, the players, not even just the defensive players, but the, the entire team sees just an authentically, a genuinely kind-hearted good man, which can sometimes be difficult in this profession. 
to remain so kind and good natured, right? Um, besides being, you know, having, I don't know, 35, I don't know how many years he's got, but he's got all that experience, he's very smart, um, he's got great recall on, on defensive systems and how offense is attacked. Uh, as a leader with his staff, he absolutely welcomes all input from every one of the staff. He's not a control guy. Uh, he wants uh, his staff members to have great input on game planning. Um, I mean, he's just, just great to work with. Love the man. Uh, going back to 2012 and that staff, I think five head coaches, Scott, Jason, yourself, Chris, Orlando, all came from that staff. What did you learn from how to balance personalities within a coaching staff to have all go in one direction? Well, I think Scott did a great job that year. You know, when you mention all those guys, they are all, uh, you know, different personalities. And, and I would say, you know, some of us are stronger personalities than the others, but we all managed to fit and, and make it work. And I think that's a real credit to, to Scott's leadership. Right? He, he made sure it was, it was working well. So, yeah, it was a, you look back, that was a pretty fun staff to be on. I mean, we won, which was important, but uh, going to work every day was, was pretty neat, too. Next one, the farm in Walsby. Adam, I'm not sure if Jeff Hamilton, if you have like a fall season, chances are that's probably going to be it. So, farm one, please go ahead. Uh, back here, farm one, welcome to TSN. Uh, Mike, we'll start with you. Um, Andrew made no bones about the fact after the game on Sunday that it's that it's personal for him, and he's kind of always been that guy with a chip on his shoulder that works for him. Um, can you take us through the, the decision to move in another direction and how difficult that was for you? I think we've already covered that. I can talk about how difficult it is because on a personal level, it's always difficult. I mean, this is pro football, and decisions are made, and uh, transitions happen, and the team is different every single year. That doesn't mean that as a head coach, you stop caring about the person that you've been around for a long time. Andrew was a great leader on our team. Um, besides being a, a great player, I mean, one of the best all time in the history of the CFL. Um, but once again, it, that decision was made, it is pro football. And the concern always then goes right to the, the actual persons behind the athlete. Right? And um, for you, Ryan, you've had some fiery exchanges this season with McLeod um, on the sidelines. Uh, and that happens as a competitor, but can you take us through your relationship with him as a former quarterback as well? Yeah, I think, you know, we get along well. Um, you know, when I, when I took the job there, I felt like we could win with him. And I think he needed that confidence instilled in him. Um, and we believe in him. And, uh, you know, we got to do our best job as coaches to put him in a, uh, an opportunity to succeed. And I think we've done that for the most part. Um, yeah, you're going to have those moments on the sideline. Now, should it happen all the time? No. Or is it excusable? Some of it? No, no it's not. But at the same time, you got to still keep an even keel and understand you're going to have some of those moments. But then at the end of the day, we got to come together and find a way to win this game. So, I mean, you know, last week he wanted a challenge and, you know, he was uh, upset about it. I, I, to be honest with you, I felt like I had earphones on, man. I wasn't even listening to him. So I was like, Wh whatever. What we got? What is our next play? So those happen. Uh, it's great that he wants to win. That's most importantly. Could he handle himself better last week? Yes, he, he could have. He knows that. Uh, being a, the leader of the team, right, um, with potential fragile sideline and things aren't going our way, is, is that, is that going to be conducive to us winning? So he understands that. I'm sure he won't have that happen this Sunday. I um, your CBC News uh, for Mike. Your team has won the inaugural game with the new stadium. You won two playoff games there. You obviously are expecting a big bomber crowd to travel over. What's been the difference in winning here, and, and what do you think about having you know that, that, uh, that crowd a lot of crowd support behind you on Sunday. Well, we're hopeful that our fans travel. They do travel very well. They are very passionate and they're loud when they wherever they arrive. Um, you know, it's a it's a short trip, right? A five five and a half hour drive. So we hope we get them. In terms of winning at Mosaic, uh, honestly, I, I don't. I know that we talk about um, our fan base at home, and it, it makes it difficult on other teams. So you'd think I'd say the same thing about other stadiums, but um, I don't know that we ever talk about being on the road and being in a hostile environment, except for maybe Labor Day, uh, where you've got to practice in different snap counts. Um, other than that, we don't re really treat it differently. So I wouldn't look at success at Mosaic as anything other than we had a good week of preparation and we 
plan to be successful wherever we're playing, be it a stadium, a parking lot, the backyard. Thanks to Ryan, because there'll be a lot of fans that bought tickets hoping that the Rough Riders be in the game uh, that aren't Bomber fans, obviously. Uh, are you hoping that some of those Rider fans are, are Argo fans for the weekend? And how can you maybe kind of combat that Bomber uh, fan invasion that may be coming to Saskatchewan? Yeah, I'm hoping that, you know, a lot of the local fans around here aren't selling their tickets to, you know, uh, everybody in Winnipeg. And we understand that's probably going to be the case, you know, because it's going to have to be silent cadence uh, potentially, right? we got to practice that. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, you, you would hope that the Regina fans, uh, well, you would know that if they go to the game, they're going to potentially be rooting for us. So, you know, there's a, you know, a lot of this, that stuff that's for media. For us as a, as a football club, you know, you, you never know what you're going to see. Let's prepare for, you know, uh, crowd noise do what we need to do, um, but we don't get caught up too much in that. Both of you guys obviously played in this league. You decided to stay on and coach, move your way up the ranks, become head coaches here. I think it's interesting both of you love the CFL. There's been a lot of chat over the years about changing the game, about trying to make it more appealing to other people, bringing in new audiences. I'm wondering, maybe it's a simple question, maybe it's not, but I'm wondering what each of you love the most about this league. Well, I would say, um, you know, these guys come up here and play football, right, and don't make a ton of money, and they're doing it for the right reasons. Um, they, they still want to play football, you know, regardless of what age they are. Um, and you build some tight bonds up here. You know, not, not a lot of guys can bring their families you know, up, up north during the season, and a lot of coaches can't bring their families up north uh, throughout the season. Or if you're a Canadian, you know, you, you can't move out where your, your job is and your wife's stuck in the other parts of Canada. That's the unique part about it. So you build some special bonds, a uh, lot of rich history in, in this league. Um, you know, didn't know much about it until I was a young kid. I went to the Sacramento CFL games uh, when I was there, and that's when I got my first taste of it. And then didn't hear much about it until you know after I got cut by the Bears, and you know my agent got a phone call about you know coming up north, and I was fired up about it. Once I got there, it was great. So um, you build a lot of great bonds here, a lot of history. Uh, proud to be a part of the league. Uh, yeah, Canadiana, the rules, I mean, I love the rules of our game. I think it's a fast-paced, very interesting game. Um, homegrown talent, uh, the, the Americans that come up here, as Brian said, they learn to love it. They learn to really love our country. Um, they're passionate about our game. Uh, it doesn't happen overnight, but, you know, relatively quickly, these, these guys that come into our country fall in love with it the game and our country. Uh, I think it's a great showcase for that. Um, yeah, there's, there's, I would say there's nothing about it I don't love. JC, I have a Three Down Nation. Um, it's often said that the best coaches steal from one another. Ryan, when you took over this job, Mike had just won his first break up. I'm wondering if there was any lessons you learned from watching him in that job and his success that you tried to implement when building I think you take a lot from anybody you can learn from, right? And uh, to make yourself better. And I, I got to give, you know, uh, Coach Huff and Coach Dave a lot of credit. Learned a lot from them in Calgary. Uh, got to see what Mike, you know, got done in Winnipeg over there, you know. And uh, did he do it overnight? No, but look what he's built is, is the factory over there. So, you know, you, you, you always want to have that type of organization, right? So you, you look at that model, how they, how they built it, how they've done it, you know, how Mike treats his players, how he talks to them, communicates to them. Um, yeah, you, you look at that and you, and you want to build that yourself. And, um, you know, we're playing in this game. So I think we've, we've made some positive strides as an organization over the last few years. Last year we came up just short to play in this game. Um, so I think we're moving in the right direction. You, know, you want to build that model that can sustain success for a long time. And Mike, I wonder, have you seen things from Ryan and his staff in the last few years that you've tried to implement with you and your staff? You know, I would say I don't spend a lot of time studying other staff, obviously any interaction you have with coaches throughout the years from when you're playing on the way through up uh, when you're coaching on other staff uh, has the potential to leave an imprint on you, but ultimately um, you can only be who you are, right? If you try to, yeah, I'm never going to be pinball, never, right? And if I tried, it would not work. So once again, I, as I spoke about Richie, authenticity is paramount, right? So um, I don't know that we have enough time in a day to study uh, what 
other organizations and other staffs are, are doing as much as really just looking at how we can save and how you can make your place better. Paul? Mm -hmm. My contract aside, is it fair to say your commitment to the bomber does not go beyond this season? Can you rephrase that so I can understand it? Never <laughs> 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 mind your contract then. Yeah. Is it fair to say that? I love the bombers. I love the city. I understand that. Yeah. Are you committed to them beyond this season? Absolutely. All right. Okay. <laughs> and one last thing. Do you also plan to coach till you're 70? Uh, no, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not going to tease that. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Paul. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you at practice uh, in about an hour's time. Thank you. All right. Awesome. Good job, man. Have a good week. Yeah.